When you experience failure, does it feel like the end of the world? I know that it can, and it certainly has for me. But failure isn't necessarily a bad thing. This episode is about the gifts of failure. You're listening to Peer Light, where we explore how to become the highest version of yourself so that you feel worthy of your craziest dreams and confident in your power to make them happen. My name is Ailey. I'm a coach and a Kundalini Yoga and meditation teacher. This is episode 52, and since I've been doing these episodes once a week, this means I've been doing them for a year now, which is kind of amazing. So the last episode about strategies to let go of your fear of failure got me thinking about failure some more, and there have been times in my life where I've really felt like a failure, but there's one that stands out in particular for me, which is one I've talked about on this podcast before. It was uh, when I was up for promotion and I didn't get it. And that was a big year for me in a lot of ways because at the start of the year, I had major surgery and it took a while to recover from that. And then a few months later, my last grandparent passed away, which was a really big deal for me because we were close. And a couple months after that, I found out that I didn't get this promotion that I thought I was going to get. And then after that, I could barely sleep or eat and I'd say breathe too, to be honest. And my mind was insanely busy because it was projecting all these conversations that I wanted to have with the people who were involved in making that decision. And my mind would not shut up. It was like obsessed about this. And so I started writing everything down that was running through my mind, which helped me start to let go of it. And even with that, though, I was still not really sleeping. So I had all this time on my hands to think about things, think about everything. And um, on top of that, like this event was like a big transition point for me because I think I had been bottling up my emotions before that. And this was the thing that kind of made it all explode. Like it was too much for me to contain. So it all started coming out. And like I had a breakdown and started bawling. I think that probably happened a few times. And at the same time, I also like I had to talk to people about what I was going through and what was going on and what I was thinking. And, and, and I did that. I opened up to people, which is something that I was not used to doing prior to that. And um, initially, I talked to my boyfriend about it, although, I mean, I'd been talking to him about, you know, stuff the entire time of our relationship. But I also opened up to, you know, some close friends and select people from work. And uh, one of the things that really surprised me was how kind people were about the whole thing, because I think I was expecting them to treat me like I was a loser or something because I didn't get the promotion. So in my mind, it was this huge failure. But the people that I spoke to were very understanding and very empathetic. And I think that made me realize that my feelings were valid. Like I had a right to be disappointed. I had a right to be angry I had a right to be sad. And I just kept allowing whatever thoughts and feelings I was having about the whole thing keep coming up. And because of that, I started to kind of like thaw and like denumb. So, you know, all those emotions that I had been holding on to for so long were really, <clears throat> sorry, starting to flow. And um, anyway, about two months after I found out about the promotion decision, I realized that I needed to end the relationship that I was in with my boyfriend because it it wasn't working for me. And that was also a major shock because prior to that, I thought we were going to be together forever. I thought we were going to get married and have kids and do all of that. And so ending that relationship, even though I initiated it, it, it felt like a failure too because it didn't turn into what I thought it was supposed to be. And then that kind of kickstarted another round of insomnia and not being able to eat and, and all that stuff again. So in a nutshell, that entire year was basically filled with challenge and loss and failure. And it was a tough time for me. But here's what it taught me. Failure isn't the end of the world. It's a portal to a new beginning because it has gifts in it if you're willing to accept them. And the first gift for me was that denumbing or just allowing my emotions to really come through. Because when you stop focusing on trying to make the pain go away or trying to find something or someone to blame it on and just 
start experiencing it fully, it changes everything. Failure becomes a portal to a new level of emotional depth. Because instead of trying to avoid the experience that you're having, you surrender to it and the resistance disappears. And that's exactly what happened for me because it was too much for me to resist and it was too much for me to contain. And that opening allowed a whole bunch of emotional clutter to get cleared away too because I was no longer trying to hold everything in. And as soon as all of that cleared, it started to give me a new perspective on everything because I could see things without that filter of the emotional clutter. And another gift of failure was that there was a new level of vulnerability and connection that I experienced. So this may be related to the fact that I was allowing myself to feel things that I hadn't felt before. But more than that, I started talking about things that I hadn't talked about before. So all those things that I'd been holding on to out of fear of what people would think or the fear that they would think that there was something wrong with me. And like I said before, the people who I trusted to share that with were very understanding and very empathetic. And so I felt more connected to people than I had in a long time. I felt very supported. And there's a really good book about failure by Pema Chodron called Fail, Fail Again, Fail Better. I want to share a quote from that book with you about being in that raw and vulnerable place. So here it is, and it's kind of long. And so I can tell you that it is out of this space that real genuine communication with other people starts to happen because it's a very unguarded, wide open space where when you look out your eyes, unless you're getting into blaming yourself or blaming others, you can go beyond the blame and just feel the bleedingness of it, the raw meat quality of it. You can't describe it, but I bet everybody knows what I'm talking about. And so in that space, communication with others and all of life happens. And my experience is that it's from that space that the best parts of ourselves come out. It's in that space when we aren't masking ourselves or trying to make circumstances go away, that our best qualities begin to shine. So in other words, not only can it change the depth of your emotional experience, it can also change the depth of connection you have with others. And then another gift of failure is that it allows you to question the meaning you make from certain experiences. So prior to me not getting that promotion, I had known people who were up for promotion and didn't get it. And I never really knew what to say to them. And I always also, I think in the back of my mind, assumed that there was some reason or something about them that led to that outcome, meaning there was like a performance issue or something like that. And This experience made me realize that that was potentially not true because I was rated at the top and even with that, I still didn't get the promotion. And so it made me develop a deeper level of empathy for everyone else who had been through this experience before me because it made me question the meaning I had given to them not getting the promotion. And then the last gift of failure that I'll share today is that it can fuel your personal evolution. Because I think when all of this happened, it gave me the power to make decisions that I would never have thought I would make. Like, I never thought I would end that relationship. I never would have thought, like, I had the strength or even the desire to do that. And it's funny because after we broke up, my then ex-boyfriend said to me, if this is what you really want and if this is really what's right for you, I'm proud of you. I never would have thought you, you'd have the strength to do this. And so I think failure, because it opens up a different level of depth within us and then a different level of depth of connection with others, it can also then use that to fuel a new level of strength. And that strength comes through in the things that we do and the choices that we make. So failure isn't necessarily a bad thing. It can lead you down new paths, paths where you surprise yourself. If you need help building inner and outer strength, learning to trust yourself, or letting go of failure or self-sabotage, I can help you do that using coaching and kundalini yoga. Book a free discovery call to see what it would be like to work with me. Find the link to do that in the show notes at purelightpodcast.com. 
under episode 52 or at eileyqtan.com. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, may you be guided by your light.